Have you ever been there laying awake at night only to suddenly remember an obscure game from your childhood, one that you've long since forgotten about, but nonetheless played through time and time again many, many years ago? A game that occurs to your memory once in a blue moon, one that, looking back, was incredibly odd. For me, that game was Dinotopia The Sunstone Odyssey, a game that released for the Nintendo GameCube and original Xbox around two decades ago, based on a series of books I never read. And the premise of this game is you're on an island stranded with sapient dinosaurs, and your job as a ginger-haired Scottish man armed with a hammer is, in simple terms, to batter said dinosaurs. Now, I've never played this game with an understanding of what makes a game good, so out of curiosity, I googled Dinotopia The Sunstone Odyssey to see what others actually thought of it, and according to Wikipedia, it received mixed to negative reviews upon its release. And yet anyone who cares to remember this game appears to remember it somewhat fondly. So I thought to myself, hey, I have an Xbox 360 that can run the original Xbox version of this game, so I made an online purchase of a copy from CEX. And yes, a £2.95 delivery charge is taking the piss, but I thought we'd take this strange trip down memory lane together, and expose myself for the weirdo that I am. And the video you're about to watch is the journey that followed. So before we begin, I thought it best to explain how this game became a part of my childhood. Now, because I was indeed a child, there is a bit of a story there. You're probably wondering how this obscure game became something that I was even aware of to begin with, especially considering I had no idea there were books and source material that it was drawing from. When I played it, I thought it was a one-off game. So how did that happen? Well, as a child, me and my brother, we have this strange obsession with dinosaurs. Um, it's something to do with being odd. And well, we wanted a game that had humans and dinosaurs in it. So... Naturally, we didn't th we didn't really know what the internet was. We were like five, six. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna write a letter to the game makers out there. So I went, dear game makers, wrote a nice little letter, addressed to nobody, of course. I'd, I'd probably assume that game devs existed in the sky and just rained games down whenever they fancied. Uh, and I went, I want a game in which people battle dinosaurs. And and, th and then I uh, showed it to my dad, I guess. So two days later, because that's how long it takes for the game makers to whip up the game, my dad and his friend come back with a copy of Dinotopia, the Sunstone Odyssey, and tell me the game exists because I asked it to. I wasn't a very logical child, so obviously the game has nothing to do with me. But at the time I was tricked into thinking it was, therefore I felt obligated to play it to excess. And that's exactly what I did. And here it is, the game that haunts my dreams. In Dinotopia The Sunstone Odyssey, we play as a man named Drake Gemini, who along with his brother Jacob was stranded on the island 10 years ago. Their dad was also with them, but he's no longer with us as he was eaten by a dinosaur, which is peak. And the only reason we know any of that is because this game has the biggest exposition dump known to man. I'm so sad to hear about your father. Jonas was a good friend of mine. Let's really concern, Mr. Point. He's scared that island's been nothing but since we were stranded here 10 years ago. Anyway, Caster Bollocks here is teaching us forbidden combat moves because, as he puts it, we've just faced a very traumatic event in our lives and we're more likely to do something reckless than might get us hurt. Therefore, we need to know how to kill things effectively because that won't backfire at all. Mate. So what he does is he gives us a mallet head for our staff, transforming it into a magical weapon known as a hammer. And then we whack some dummies as the frame rate figures out whether or not this is a game or a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, something we keep up for a good minute until Caster Testicles here is satisfied. And you'll know when he is because he'll give you far too much knowledge of gameplay mechanics and then ask you to fetch his rocks. As for Jacob, Drake's angry brother with short hair and a beard, well he's off to join the outsiders, the genocidal maniacs who want to kill the dinosaurs. That's how he's going to use the skills Caster Pollux has taught him. You should be careful too though. I don't trust those outsiders. We might not see eye to eye on this, but you are my brother, and I still care about you. Thanks. Goodbye. Well, thanks for your help, Mr. Pollux. I could use your help with one last thing, though. It seems I've misplaced my favorite glass rocks somewhere deep in the cave. If you find them for me, I will give you some hobie peppers to take with you. I understand if you need to get going, though. 
Now this game has an awful lot of fetch quest style content, and by misplaced, Caster Pollux means he simply put his marbles in a different room of his house. One that just so happens to have a feral raptor in it for some reason. But since Pollux has taught us how to utilise this hammer, Pollux's territorial household pet is simply no match for us. I found your glass rocks, Mr. Pollux. And I killed your pet. Great, you found my rocks. Wonderful. Here are your peppers. I really don't understand why he's giving the peppers to my ballsack. Use them well now. This game's commitment to award-winning dialogue simply never ends. The harvest was good this year. But now we're unshackled from the tutorial, I suppose we can actually crack on with the bulk of the stuff. This game is comprised of two key ingredients. The first being a childhood obsession with dinosaurs that went on for simply far too long. And the second is meth. Ah! Here's how Drake looks on the cover of the game. And this is what he looks like in the game. Fuck me. It's like a ginger-haired mixture between Cocaine Shrek and Handsome Squidward. But from here we venture out into the magical land of Dernitopia, and since it's not very aesthetically pleasing because the game is quite elderly now, the most notable thing we're doing is beating things to a pulp. No need to thank me, sir. I took pleasure in it. In combat there are a variety of different enemy archetypes to face, from simple bandits all the way to cavemen for some reason. And of course on the dinosaur front you go from little dinos all the way up to fuck, and the gameplay eases you into trickier scenarios by granting you more and more skills as you go along, along with better mallet heads and sunstones so you can amplify their power and your health gets significantly improved the moment you start receiving armor. I know it is not much, but accept these gauntlets as a small sign of my appreciation. They will help protect your hands and forearms. I'm not being funny, love, but you'd fucking hope so. So while you're cluttering humans and dinosaurs alike to death, at least you get a sense of progression. You start small and humble, and over the course of a five-hour playthrough, you level up to clart out a T-Rex proving once and for all that the Jurassic Park movies are pointless. I'm gonna be honest, I actually quite like this game's combat. There's nothing impressive about it, but it's quite a satisfying gameplay loop. And it's not challenging either, so you can switch off and enjoy the other things this game has to offer. If it indeed offers anything else. I mean, there's a touch of light platforming, which may or may not do your head in, but I can only really think of a handful of instances where it happens. The vast majority of the gameplay consists of moving from one area to the next and fighting whichever enemies happen to be there. Sometimes their being present makes sense, and other times they're simply there because you need an obstacle. But be careful. A number of raptors have made the gardens their nest site and would defend them fiercely. Because of course. There's a segment where you fly what the game refers to as a sky bax, and I have honestly no clue why this segment is timed. <laughs> Although I will say you do crash the poor creature an awful lot. But it is fun for the whole less than five minutes you probably do it over the course of the game in total. And then there are strutters, which are machines you can operate. Well, there's one that you can operate for a short bit. It's a bit of a peculiar experience. You strut around the place and fight other strutters, which for the record looks and sounds a bit like this. Although you do fight big dinosaurs with it as well, and they're actually more threatening than other strutters. So, use the guns. Who'd have thought American philosophy would have been useful against dinosaurs? But again, this is a feature you only get to use for one solitary segment. And by the time you've got used to this gameplay, it's over. Although you do spend more time fighting strutters than actually in one yourself. It can be a bit of a pain, but trust me, these big machines are no match for my hammer. So though the game is really short and the gameplay does switch it up every now and then, overall, it's a bit of a flat experience, being honest. But don't worry, because everything else is almost certainly flatter. Any bits of side content you might do in passing consist entirely of fetch quests. Great! You've got them! Wonderful! Here are your hobby peppers. Now, I can get these peeled and into the pies. Although this geezer's funny. I like him. Yes, there's still fundamental fetch missions, 
but his dialogue, consistency and appearance are entertaining. He asks you to get some berries so he can dye an item of clothing. The next time you meet him he has hot pink pants and asks you to kill a dinosaur wearing a sombrero so he can have the hat. Get back, you toothy dinos! As you mooch through the world, there's plenty of side content that you can do that's attached to a particular mission. So, if you get to the end of the mission and there's still content to do, the game will tell you. You can move on and accept that you'll never do it, or you can go back and indeed complete it, if you so wish to do so. But if I've managed to prove something so far, it's that you're not exactly missing something either way. Thank goodness for a guardian like you. Most of the time. But yeah, let's talk a bit about narrative. Though a story isn't absent, this game certainly belongs to the category of titles in which the story is simply there to justify you doing gameplay. Drake is on a mission to become a guardian of Dinotopia, and though for gameplay purposes that turns us into a sledgehammer wielding maniac, the reality is he must become sound of mind, body and spirit, so he makes himself known to the sages of these virtues. I am the sage of the body. My favourite is the sage of the body, he's like a sloth mixed with a dinosaur, whose only article of clothing is a hat, and he trains us up with the aid of his more human friend who's an absolute combat nutter. <laughs> I suppose we need to prove ourselves or something. But the reason why our role as the guardian of Dinotopia is necessary is because the outsiders are building factories so they can build loads and loads of strutters, both so they can pollute and strut dinosaurs to death. And with Jacob being a part of the main antagonist faction, you think that Drake would have to face his brother at some point, but no, he just rocks up at some point and says that the outsiders leader Zane's a bit of a dick. And yeah, I can see that. He makes us clobber a sumo wrestler to death for some reason. There. I've beaten your best. Now release my brother. Now! Grab him! No! Zane! Let him go! He fought fairly! He won! Life isn't fair, Jacob! Get rid of him now! <laughs> and before you ask, at no point in this story does a single character's mouth move. There! Now I'll untie you and... But Drake gets stronger and stronger and finally becomes ready to confront Zane and his outsider friends before they can, I guess, pollute this island. Plot twist. Dad isn't dead after all, he's just been a prisoner of Zane's. He appears to have survived being eaten by a dinosaur fairly unscathed. He was swallowed whole and not digested somehow. I knew I could count on you to come to me rescue. Doesn't change anything narratively, but it's the thought that counts. I love you very much, son. Goodbye. For now. So the plot concludes with Drake bombing Zane's factory. Why, of course it was a controlled demolition, Your Honor. You also twat some more dinosaurs just to keep it balanced. Face Zane's awkward scorpion strutter thing. It can be exploited quite easily, to be fair. Then all that remains is to defeat Zane. What on earth is that helmet? They tried to make the fight dramatic, but it's really hard when the technology's a bit against you. You are indeed a formidable warrior. Join me, and we will rule this island together. I would never do that, Zane. You are a fool for even asking. <laughs> and this will be your day of defeat. <laughs> You're a disgrace to mankind. You will perish with the rest of your scaly friends. Surrender now, Zane, and I will spare you. Never! I will never give in to you! This your final warning. Give up now, or I will finish you. I will not surrender! Then you leave me no choice. Yeah, that's quite literally it. With a bit of off-ramp dialogue to cap it off, and then some credits, because who doesn't like credits, the game's over. And there you have it, the game that's haunted my dreams for simply far, far too long. Dinotopia, the Sunstone Odyssey. A game that with the power of critical thought I can now see is a bit crap, yeah. But I always enjoyed playing through it as a kid, and I didn't not enjoy playing through it for this video. So I like to refer to this as tastefully shit. 
It tells a coming of age story that only makes sense thanks to the dumps of exposition we get. It looks aesthetically worn out because of its age, which is 100% fine, and its gameplay was probably nothing to scream about back in 2004. But there's a certain heart to these obscure old games that you just don't get these days. Even when that old game is pretty crap, you know it exists because somewhere somebody wanted to make it. Not necessarily for the sake of sales, I can't imagine this one being a big commercial success considering everybody I speak to about it has never heard of it, but rather just to create something fun and enjoyable. There was no need for breathtaking visuals and complex mechanics as nice as they are, the game just had to work, so there's an element of charm to this otherwise forgotten game and that's probably about all it has going for it. But I'm curious as to if anybody watching this video knows about this game as well. There's always a chance it'll reach the circles of people who have, because, well, they exist. But I'd also like to know who hadn't seen this game until this video. But anyway, that was a strange trip down memory lane. Thank you all for watching today's video, I really hope that you've enjoyed it. It's definitely a bit out there as far as game choice is concerned compared to my usual programming, so I understand that this video is probably not going to be one of my more popular ones. And I didn't spend too much time nor too much money, outside of postage anyway, making it, so jobs are good. But if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to go ahead and leave a like if you're new, maybe hit subscribe, share the channel with all your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be massively appreciated. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. So until next time, please take care and goodbye. And if you simply refuse to take care, well, I'll be sending Castor Pollux round to have a word with your bollocks. And you don't want that, so behave yourself.